Hi, so now that we've developed a really nice left hand position with our vibrato, things should be moving nice and smooth and supplely without any um, additional things. We're now going to bring in the bow because obviously that is what's going to help us to create a really beautiful vibrato sound. The first thing we're going to do is obviously going to get into your position. We're going to go against the left hand with our, um, go against the shoulder with our left hand right here to create that lovely wave. But obviously all the, uh, the weight of the violin is now resting firmly on your shoulder. It's really important to make sure you've got the right shoulder rest for you and that you are really comfortable. I'm going to take this moment just to advocate my central chin rest. It's really, really um, important to have a, a chin rest or a setup that is comfortable for you. I really love my central chin rest because it allows me to be more central, as the name suggests. It allows me to be really um, sort of further uh, along my violin closer to the tailpiece and therefore everything feels a lot more central it, it's much more comfortable for me the violin is higher on my shoulder and I get a much better um, technique of playing with it um, that's something you might want to have a look into or consider I will put a link to central chin rests on this video so going back to what we were talking about we're going to carry on with our lovely rocking our waving put your thumb on the other side again it needs to be really really loose and you can do the same things up and down, up and down, coming to a gradual stop to make that lovely vibrato sound. Whatever then you want you to do is just pop the bow on the string and see what it sounds like. Okay, now that is a massive big vibrato sound, but it's great because everything is working. The sound is uh, vibrating and your fingers are moving nice and tight. It doesn't sound tight. That's what we want to avoid, a really tight sound. We want a nice, wide, open wobble, essentially, on that string. Great. So now that we've got that comfortable, I want to do my second finger now. I'm not worrying about intonation at all. I'm just wobbling wherever it feels most comfortable. And then my first finger. Okay, that was not as good as the other two, so I need to practice that one a little bit more. Again, I can feel my thumb locking, so I need to push my thumb, get it nice and loose, and then I can get my first finger wobbling in a nice way. And that feels much better. Fourth finger. Again, a little bit tight, needs a bit of loosening, so I can carry on doing, going back to my exercises. It's really important that you keep doing this, okay? Don't ever think, oh, well, I don't need to do those anymore. Even those most professional players I know still do vibrato exercises to keep their vibrato fresh and to keep it nice and loose. So once we get to that point where you're feeling comfortable just popping your, your finger on the string and having a good wobble, you can then do vibrato scales. Um, in scales, it's not always recommended that we do vibrato because we want to make sure our intonation is really true. But for vibrato development, I think doing scales is essential to make sure that we get really comfortable. We're going to start in third position, we're going to start on a D major scale in third position. So your first finger would be on the A string. If we get that nice smooth movement started before I begin, I want to vibrato on each string. Now I'm not worrying about the sound quality or the intonation really, I'm worrying about getting that nice smooth vibrato and changing to each finger as I go. So I did each one. Also, doing vibrato, you won't always need to block your fingers. A lot of the time we're told to keep our fingers in a nice smooth block because that's going to help strengthen and, um, the fingers and get, and get the best sound. In vibrato, it is fine to have one finger at a time to get that loose, relaxed vibrato. So that's what I'd like you to do. Practice doing those uh, vibrato exercises on scales in third position. You can then move to first position and do as much wider wobble as you would like to. We want to eventually get to the point where we can refine our vibrato, get it to a smoother and, and better point. Again, I think scales are really useful for this, but it's, it's again, experimenting with where you feel it's most appropriate. <laughs> wobble. Now I'm going to try something a little bit tighter. I'm going to try some more finger vibrato. So that's a tighter, more, vibrato, more finger vibrato sound. 
Again, my arm is very much involved at the moment in these early stages. And then you can start to have a look at your wrist, getting that more used, and then finger vibrato where it just kind of goes right from that finger. So those are just a few ideas for you to develop your vibrato further. I hope it's been helpful.